to startuprad.io, your podcast and YouTube blog covering the German startup scene with news, interviews, and live events. Hello and grüezi everybody. This is Joe from startuprad.io, your startup podcast and YouTube blog from Germany. Today I have a Swiss German guest and instead of hello, there is grüezi. Grüezi Davide, how you doing? Hi there, Jörn. I'm doing fine, and you? <laughs> doing great, thank you. Today I invited you because you have a, you're the co-founder of the startup Cyrene, headquartered in Hessen, in lovely Wiesbaden. <laughs> and um, since this podcast is sponsored by Invest in Hessen, of course, we'll talk a little bit about the state for everybody who's a new subscriber. Hessen is one of the 16 states of Germany, sometimes jokingly, Mallorca, due to the large German population there, is called the 17th state. But don't get fooled there. We only have 16. That said, welcome. I've been stalking you a little bit on LinkedIn, as I usually do with my guests. And it turns out uh, you've been a pretty classic guy working in a Swiss bank. How did you end up? providing analytics for physical shopping carts. Yeah, uh, basically, I, I think every Swiss wants has to go to a bank. No, no. Um, well, basically, yeah, it's uh, it started off or w with a bank. I wanted to as I, I as I wanted to study business and I ended up studying business. I wanted to see whether the banking world is something for me. It ended up not to be something of interest, um, but How did I come to sort of become a retail analytics expert and how did Sarim come about? Uh, basically, it all started uh, off with my personal interest to found a startup. I really wanted to found a startup at some point. I did it uh, after my bachelor with uh, some co-founders um, that I got to know really well, but we fucked it up majorly uh, because we sort of... Uh, um, miscalculated the greediness of certain partners and uh, the negotiation powers of certain partners. So we failed there, and then we said, "Okay, let's uh, continue our education." Then we, uh, then I started to do a master's degree, uh, and one of it being entrepreneurship. So I really wanted to know what is this all about. Uh, where I went to Rotterdam, and in Rotterdam I got to know my co-founders uh, for uh, Cyrene. Um, we sort of um us we we stumbled upon the idea so we did not create the idea or the, the core foundation of Cyrene uh, we sort of discovered it um as we met Herbert and Herbert is sort of the inventor of the core concept uh, of Cyrene and we sort of got infected or I got infected by the idea while I was doing my masters and I couldn't get it out of my head and then we sort of uh, for the first half a year we sort of Try to find the perfect market for it. Try to find the perfect fit. Uh, and as I as I knew marketing, online marketing, and and my co-founders as well, because they've also founded uh, startups in in the online segment. And 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 this is why we sort of came across uh, this offline marketing idea that we really wanted to push forward. And yeah, this is how it came about initially. So, so all my background, I really wanted to do something myself. And then I discovered the perfect opportunity and then I went for it. Let's back up a little bit. I've yeah. heard nice things about Rotterdam. Uh, many people <laughs> know it for the harbor. Can you tell us a lot of nice things about the city? <laughs> Well, basically, uh, I, I didn't, I haven't been to Rotterdam before I studied there, and then I really fell in love with the city. Um, so the harbor is obviously as big as the city itself, um, but you don't necessarily see it uh, the whole time. You just see the huge ships passing you um, from the from the river, and then in at the university, it's a university town. Uh, it has. The lovely Dutch people, uh, they are super friendly, super open-minded. Um, also my co-students, as everybody wanted to study entrepreneurship, everybody was really open-minded when it comes to juggling new ideas. Um, the, the city itself, lovely food, uh, not necessarily the Dutch food in itself, because this is 
sort of uh, it's snacks and, and fast food, but I have to say they can cook really, really well when it comes to urban uh, kitchen. So I can really recommend it. Um, it's also really close to Amsterdam. It's like half an hour if you want to jump to the city central. And yeah, it's perfect. I really like it. I can go there and have some bitter ballen and some oily oil in the winter and, and enjoy the Dutch weather. <laughs> Well, Dutch weather is not necessarily worse <laughs> than the German weather or the British yes, weather. That said, um, you've been talking about you screwed up one startup. What did you do and what went wrong? And especially important, what did you learn from there? Well, we, we basically were in Switzerland. So the startup was founded in Switzerland and we really wanted to tap into the market that the Swiss uh, love to commute. And we sort of saw the idea uh, or a similar idea in, uh, in, in the US already, which is ClassPass. So we sort of wanted to introduce a bond card 100, so a card where you can uh, you go unlimited and use something uh, uh, with unlimited power. And we wanted to introduce it for the fitness community, uh, community because in, in, in Switzerland, we didn't have it. We, we, we did have a lot of small chains, mid, uh, fitness chains. But if you commuted from one city to the other, you basically could not do sports in the other city. So we said like, okay, uh, we want to introduce this in, in Switzerland. Uh, but we said also, um, this has already been done. So a com uh, someone has already come up with this idea. So we sort of became a franchisee. So we founded the company and, and licensed the idea or, or the brand uh, from from a Dutch uh, from in the Netherlands, and then we sort of fucked it up because we sort of we had an agreement with them. We were really successful in acquiring gyms, and and we wanted to go live with the with the customer side, but then they became really greedy and sort of tried to renegotiate the whole contract uh, of using their brand. And then we said like this is not a lucrative business anymore, and so we backed out. It was a hard decision. Um, long nights. We looked each other deep in the eye and said like, okay, are we really gonna finish? Are we gonna this whole year? Do we say, okay, we cut it off? And we said like, yes, we do, uh, because it's the right way to do. We want it to be flexible. We want it to be self-sufficient. We want to do our own thing. And uh, this is the learning out of it. So you sort of, uh, in the beginning, you, you can really go uh, for it. You can trust each other, but at some point you also have to write stuff down and, and get the legal framework uh, before it, it hits the, like it, it, before it actually seems to be successful as well. So you sort of, uh, yeah, you have to you have to do the groundwork. <laughs> Let me back off once again a little bit. You yeah. know, if there's no detours, it's not startuprate.io. We <laughs> are right now, as we record this in the morning of the 16th of September, we are in the podcast charts of Germany, Indonesia, and Singapore. And I feel the need to explain to all people not from Germany what Bahncard 100 actually means, <laughs> because it's, it's, a, it's a typical, ev every German knows it, but outside of Germany, there, there may be some cultural references missing. So basically, <laughs> Die Bahn is the German railway operator, former monopolist Deutsche Bahn. And you can basically buy frequent customers discount cards. They're called Bahn card. And if you buy a Bahn card 25, you get a 25% discount for one year. If you buy 50, you get 50% discount. And if you buy 100, you can basically hop on any train you want and use everything for free i do believe it's in the area of several thousand euros a year this barn card that said okay <laughs> you learned something um about not rene renegotiating contracts when you <laughs> first settle for one that's fine and i i was i'm a little bit curious did your franchisee giver the american company that wanted to renegotiate the contract did they actually succeed in terms of uh getting a toehold in europe after you guys uh, said no way 
Uh, well, basically, for for us, our franchise or was was a Dutch a Dutch company. They um, still exist, um, so they are uh, sort of operating. They're not operating in Switzerland, <laughs> uh, which is a pity. Um, but they are operating uh, in the Netherlands, in in Germany. They were actually bought by a German company now. So in in Germany, there are many um, startups or startups. It's a rocket internet startup that does something similar. It's another startup that does something similar. They're like five to six years old now. Now. Um, so yeah, they're they're still operating, um, but I think there's a, a growing competition as well. With basically here in Germany, we have uh, Fitness First, which is just huge, or MacFit, which is huge, which has chains all over the country. So also in, in Switzerland, it started to have a lot of fitness chains where you have different uh, locations. So we wanted to tap into the, the first mover advantage, but now it's uh, basically gone in Switzerland. Um, but yeah, yeah, we learned, learn, well, I learned basically not only renegotiating contracts, it's also, you can be really successful if you just go for it. Um, so we, we, we learned, okay, we can convince the fitness chains, we can convince customers, which was really, really nice. Uh, so the first time you're like, uh, doing something on your own, your own idea uh, and how you want to apply it. So this was the thing I got positively out of it because I wanted to do it again. And for me, it wasn't basically, it was about the idea, but it also was about the people executing the idea. And that's why sort of in, in Rotterdam, I got to know these two guys uh, that were as driven as I was when it came to entrepreneurship, but also grounded in sort of this operational aspect. So they really wanted to uh, execute on an idea really, really well. I think this is also something uh, we ger in Germany, we're really good at. So we have an idea and we really execute uh, it really, really well. Um, and this is why we sort of, when we came across the idea um, of Cyrene or, of, or, or the core idea of Cyrene, we said like, okay, we, we can find a nice market for this. So we found a, a really, really nice market and we found a really nice business model behind it. So we sort of had the technological aspect covered um, when we came across it. And then we just had to uh, develop the rest. And this is how we came about it. What all happened next to our masters. So the first year was... Basically, Basically studying, studying went down, went down. <laughs> startup went, went up, up, and you you you, you um, started, um, started to choose, to choose your, your curriculum, curriculum according, according to what, what helps, helps your startup, your startup and, not and not what helps in uh, understanding. Uh, 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 while my co-founders co studying, studying accounting, accounting and finance, finance, so they really so they just went for the venture, venture capital, capital aspect and 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 the business plan aspect and not anything else anymore. And I I went more into the Legal, legal aspects, aspects of founding, founding a startup. startup. So, it was, so it was really, really nice, nice to use, to use the, education the education to, 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 to directly, directly apply it to, to, to your, your own, own company. company. Ha, first time you feel money not wasted. Okay. But um, <laughs> to, to take everybody on board here with our podcast, let, let, let me try to understand uh, one more time how you actually bumped into the idea did you did you drive your shopping cart through Reva, which is a big <laughs> retailer here in germany and said oh damn i wish i would have analytics for that <laughs> how did this happen yeah, yeah well, well basically, basically um, um to be honest one of my co-founders co was my flatmate, flatmate. Uh, so, uh, we so we lived together, together in rotterdam, rotterdam and, and he came, came across, across uh, habit and, uh, and they, they sort of talked about, about this idea, idea um, of sirene um, um, um and he sort of he got sort infected, infected first. first. Uh, you have to yeah, imagine yeah, he was then really hyped, hyped and he was like, okay, Davide, I have to get you on board as well. And he was nagging me the whole time to, to also meet him and meet up with him. And then we sort of met, met up as well. And we met up in our apartment on the couch and discussed uh, the, uh, whole the whole aspect, aspect and, and, and I invested, I invested uh, several, uh, several months, months into also into, so looking into the markets, into the markets as, well. as well. And at and some, some point, point I, I, I believe it was January, January or February, we all said like, like okay, let's, let's go, go for it. it. We, we, we really want to go do it, it. Uh, because uh, uh, we had been like the senior aspect in our team with Herbert and the younger, more driven aspect with Ben Sill and I. And we said like, okay, this is a nice team constellation because we have sort of the expertise on the one side and we have we this have naivety this and, 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 and like the like dynamic, dynamic power, power uh, to, uh, sort to sort of, of uh, do it. Do it. 
and and, and to, to be honest, be honest um, why, why did it become, did it become um, a, um, a company, company that, that does, does retail, retail analytics, analytics in supermarkets? In supermarkets. Uh, for, uh, for me, me um, I, I did not did have not that have much that to much do with, uh, with retail, retail in, 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 in before, before I, I, came I, I came across this idea. idea. But, but I, had I had a lot to do with marketing, with marketing and I had and a lot had to do lot with, to do with, with like, uh, structuring, uh, structuring marketing, marketing campaigns, campaigns where, as yeah, I worked as for an agency, as I did it for the startup before. And we sort of saw that there is a need in the offline segment. What do I mean with offline? So everything that's not... Google, Google, Facebook, Facebook and, and co. co. So, so, so banners, banners um, um, TV, TV radio. radio. There's, something There's something to do in to marketing, do in marketing offline, offline to make, to make it, it more, more transparent, transparent, to make it to make more it analytical. More analytical. analytical. And, and uh, we uh, sort of defined the supermarket, the supermarket as the last moment of truth. Of truth. So where, so where a, shopper a shopper takes the last, the last decision, decision, because when, because when you, go you go into a store, store you normally you say like, okay, like, I want to buy pasta or I want to buy a sauce and stuff, and stuff like this, but you don't know exactly what ex what you want to have. have. And we said like, we said okay, like, we're gonna, gonna introduce, introduce a, marketing a marketing channel, channel uh, to, the uh, to the supermarket to first of, first of all, give an inspirational advertisement and then analyze how effective it was. But I will explain this a little later, how it exactly works, but this is where I come from. So I come rather from the, from the online, online marketing, marketing segment, segment where, where I knew this, this is already, already possible, possible and I discovered, discovered that it's, that it's not, not possible, possible offline and I wanted, and I wanted to, change to change that. Uh -huh, I see. First, another cultural reference because you're always talking about Herbert, which is a German first name. It is yes. one of your co-founders. We, we yes. may add this yes. for everybody. Secondly, I've, I've been thinking and, um, since I started Startup Radio.io more than five years ago, I always, uh, or uh, let's say I frequently talk to marketing people who want to do this with me, that with me, this with me, that yeah. with me. And actually, um, not to mention that it's quite tiresome because they always back out. But on the other hand, they seem to be totally reliant, totally overconfident on some KPIs when you dig down deeper that are actually just uh, some numbers somebody says, mm, yeah, let, let's do something like yeah. this. And they completely and utterly trust this. Do you think marketing, uh, don't, don't get me wrong, There, there's a, a great use of KPIs. There is need of KPIs in marketing, but do you think that sometimes the over-reliance There is an over reliance on mm -hmm. KPIs in marketing, especially online marketing. What do you think? Yeah, to, yeah, to, to be honest, be honest um, it, it obviously is a trend, a trend that, that there is, is uh, online marketing and, and the high reliance of uh, data, data science now being moved into, into to the marketing, marketing segment, segment. And there are many, many agencies, agencies and marketing agencies, agencies telling you how to do it better and, and it can always be improved and, and you have you to have do it differently, differently and you have to use, use different channels, channels and, 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 and then they show you these, these nice metrics, metrics behind, behind it, it how, how, how it can be improved. Um, to be honest, um, I have to say even we are, we have most of the time we have to do with offline marketing and there it really is not a science uh, how um, the KPIs are calculated. It's rough estimates or it's studies being done three to four years ago, how, what the audience could be looking like or who is your target customer. Um, so for, for, for For us, it was, it was, we had one trend, um, or here in Germany, one trend in marketing that we did not want to tap into. It's like the personalization, because we think it's going into um, a direction that needs to be um, guided a little bit more. So as we had like these scandals with Cambridge Analytica, like psychographic targeting and stuff like this. So this is the direction we did not want to be associated with when we, when we developed our idea. But we also wanted to, on the other side, offline marketing, which is really, it's, it's grounded in numbers that have to be adjusted and have to be validated. Um, so we wanted to strike the right balance between being transparent in our marketing approach uh, without tapping into like the personal sphere of a, of a shopper that is inside of the store. Uh, but coming back to your question with the KPIs, 
Um, it either is a too high reliance on KPI, I have to say, and then the creativity gets lost, um, or it is just gut feeling. So we are talking to many marketing officers that, that highly rely on their gut feeling, um, which most of the time was successful for them, and, and it's then hard to sort of introduce new aspects that could work. Um, but, but it's, it's always, always fun, fun to discuss with them, <laughs> with our clients, uh, how, how they can, can improve and uh, where, where, where we can find actionable insights uh, with the marketing campaigns. campaigns. So, so yeah, yeah it's, uh, to be honest, honest, I think we have to be grounded, grounded in data, data but, but not, not every decision, decision has, has to be taken uh, uh, just, just solely, solely based uh, uh, on data. data. It, it also has, has to be true to the brand. It has to be true to yourself. Um, so, so startups, startups or large, large corporates, corporates, they have, they have to sort of uh, be, be creative as well and not just try to optimize the conversion rates and optimi uh, opening, opening rates, rates and stuff like this. Like um, so so it, it is a balance, balance, I have to say. I actually do feel the same. You have to combine KPIs with gut feeling, for example, um, Google Google Ads, you may know if you uh, bumped into our website and discovered startuprate.io that way, we're using a lot of Google Ads. And actually, yeah. they suggest like a thousand uh, possible AdWords and most of them don't make sense. So you have to make a decision there based on gut feeling and then you can get yes. back to the KPIs. That's kind of how I'm feeling about it. <laughs> that said, um, let's take a little walk. Um, can you tell us how, how it actually feels? Let's imagine me uh, driving my shopping cart <laughs> in a river. Actually, what, what never happens to me is I have something in mind. I need to shop, but basically I, uh, my wife says you need to go grocery shopping. I go grocery shopping, uh, take the shopping cart in into the um into the river then i opened the bring app actually also something from switzerland and then i realized oh damn we need to buy such a lot of stuff because my wife is happily typing all the stuff we need uh during the time i need to get by car to the grocery store so let's imagine yeah, yeah. a really stressed out joe uh just opened uh his app uh at the shopping cart and entered the retail store so What, what will happen to me? What you guys are actually doing um, to, to analyze this? Yeah, yeah happy, happy to guide, to guide you through our, our uh, customer, customer journey. journey. Um, well, first, first of all, of you, all you mentioned you a really, mentioned nice, really point, nice point, and this is why this is personalization, personalization uh, in, the in the supermarket doesn't work, doesn't work because, because you have a shopping have a mission shopping and it's, and it's uh, your uh, wife's uh, bring uh, list. Um, but but, but, but uh, uh, mentioning, mentioning this, so you have so you basically, basically how do we operate? operate. Uh, we installed uh, we identification, identification devices, devices in the, into, into shopping, shopping devices, devices. Uh, so, uh, so shopping trolleys and so forth. And our system is basically composed of or our Our hardware, hardware aspect, aspect, aspect is its screens, screens. So, really, so really um, um nice looking nice screens, screens installed of the shopping, of the shopping aisles. aisles so you so basically you where you walk where you past walk where the products where the are products next, are next uh, to you, to you. Uh, we have like we have around like five to six five screens, screens uh, inside, of inside of stores, stores and, and what, happens what happens is when you when are in front of a screen like five to six meters it identifies not you Jörn, it identifies the shopping trolley 157 and it Defines. I I see. So it doesn't define Joe, but a stressed out guy with a, with a start <laughs> of a beard who's losing his his top hair. And actually, you track this guy and not me personally, right? Yeah, yeah. We, yeah, we don't we track don't you at all. We don't, we don't even know that, know that it's male or female or whoever. It's really just really about just the shopping, about trolley. The shopping trolley. And, and um, we sort of then define what kind of situation are you in. Is it a Monday morning where you're really stressed out? Or is it more of a Friday evening purchase? Or is it warm outside? Is it cool outside? Where are you actually inside of the store? And, and how, does it, how does it work? And then we define the best ad that is being played to you. And... 
And as and we are as only we're doing, doing it contact-based, so, so when you when approach, you approach it, plays it plays you an ad, ad we also we can also add can sounds add to it. Because, because normally you have like you have these like loops inside of, inside of stores, stores that really that annoy you at some point because it's always the same sound and stuff. And we like developed a technology that only is directed to you and you hear the commercial. So then the sound will direct your eyes to the screen because away from your app. And so you sort of, sort of what what, what happens, happens then, then whether you get whether inspired, inspired by the commercial, by the commercial or not, or not um, is really, um, up, really to up to many factors, factors. this is something, this is something um, um, we just we know just this shopping this trolley came in contact let's say with a coca-cola, coca-cola commercial. commercial then you continue, then you continue your, your shopping, shopping journey, journey and then we know, then we know for the next for the screens, screens you came uh, you came across a barbecue commercial and then you came across a yogurt commercial and then what we do and this is the beauty of the system is we combine it at the end when you left the store and you're happy happily happily bought everything everything you needed needed. Um, then we combine it with your uh, basket basket. so we basically basically know okay okay, shopping trolley 157 bought coca-cola Um, And then we have a huge huge data set of evaluating evaluating whether it was due to the commercial commercial or not. So this is basically basically transferring transferring the online online logic logic to 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 the the offline offline segment segment where you say like, okay, okay, someone someone clicked clicked on your commercial, someone clicked clicked on your commercial, commercial, someone went into a a edited process, process, product product to your basket, basket, and someone someone converted converted it. Um, And then we we have have something something called called the the Shopping Trolley Trolley Analytics 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 Analytics
an ice cream, an brand, ice cream brand that wanted, wanted to know, to know uh, whether it works whether or not. And we advertise barbecue sausages, sausages uh, as, I uh, as I just mentioned. And yes, it and has, has a, a strong um, impact. So temperature has a strong impact on your purchase behavior, depending obviously on the product category. So we found it obviously for ice cream, for barbecue, but also for other products that it has an opposite effect. So the colder it gets, the the better advertisement works. So we so we normally tell our clients it it has a like obviously you sell more if the weather is good when it comes to sausages or obviously you sell more when it comes to ice cream. But it doesn't necessarily mean that your 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 advertisement works better so that you convert more people when it's hot because if everybody wants to buy ice cream anyway, you have this baseline that that wants to go for it. But then the question is. Is it also, is it then, also effective then effective to run a campaign, run a campaign or, not? or not? And, and, and this and is this like is the questions, like the questions that, we that we try to answer together, answer together with them, with them. Um, um, to sort of say sort like, of okay, say like, maybe, okay it was, maybe it was, maybe it wasn't. Maybe it wasn't. Um, yeah, but that's, yeah, but basically, that's basically where we go. Where but we yes, go. But your, yes your, your, your shopping your behavior is highly dependent on situational factors. So what kind of mood you're in, what time it is a day, and and what what weekday it is, and where you're actually in the store. And it is also dependent on what kind of of marketing, of marketing impressions, impressions you had you before, had before. So, and, so, and, and, this is, and this is this is this is the beauty of the system. Of the system. We can we sort can of sort also incorporate all TV campaigns, TV campaigns and radio. And radio. Marketing, marketing measures, measures. We, 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 we have we these, have as, these everybody as everybody has the same, the same likelihood to have, to have come in contact with them. And then we sort of tell our clients, tell our clients how effective, how effective uh, then uh, to add to, to a Sirene campaign, campaign was. was. And, and this the is The really more nice. you talk, the more questions I have. <laughs> let, 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 me, let me quickly structure this. Uh, can you answer us in like two or three questions? How did, j just out of pure curiosity, how did this advertisement for the ice cream maker during winter actually go? And did you also see like in Germany, there is, uh, we still call it winter, but it doesn't get that cold anymore. Uh, there are certain uh, types of ice cream you get mostly in winter, which are very delicious, like gingerbread <laughs> flavor and uh, all that good stuff. Um, did this have an impact? And then comes my idea that I was referring to like five minutes ago. <laughs> Yeah, um, yeah um, so, basically so basically for, for, the, for winter the winter campaign, campaign um, to, be honest, to be honest, it had, it had more, more of an... Of an um, like, um, the like the temperature did not have not that much of a significance, much of significance uh, during that period of time. It really was really the flavors, the flavors uh, that uh, uh, spiked, um, or, certain or certain flavors that spiked, that spiked cinnamon, cinnamon uh, obviously, uh, obviously, and obviously certain, certain flavors, flavors that, uh, that rather, rather uh, were, not were not as effective. As effective. Um, um, but, but the but thing the that thing Germans that most respond to, and in combination with our advertisement as well, and it does not come as a surprise, is discounts. So if something is on discount, yeah, you basically basically sells, basically sells a, a, a 200%, 200 more, percent more and then it's and always, then it's the, always question the question whether you want to follow up with a with a with a campaign, a campaign. so whether you so want to mention the discount, the discount or, not, or not because we can like hyper localize, localize uh, our advertisements, our advertisements uh, to, uh, to sort of have the price mentioned or have it not mentioned and this is like the the best combination in Germany when you sort of mention today you save 20% on whatsoever that the people people respond the most, the most to it, to it also, also uh, to, uh, to, to ice cream, ice cream um, to, be uh, honest. to be honest. Um, so, so I think, I think as we, as, as we, in Germany, as Germany, Aldi and Lidl and stuff, and stuff became, became big, big um, the Germans uh, are, are, prone are prone to be, to be uh, open, uh, for, open for, discounts for discounts the most, the most. <laughs> I have to say. Have to say. <laughs> that was what I would have guessed, and I would have also made the reference to Aldi and Lidl, two German <laughs> discounters who are actually active. I think almost across the world. Uh, of course, you'll find a link in the show notes. That said, when you've been talking, I had an idea because have you ever thought of making it useful or interactive? What I had in mind is when I get into the shopping cart, I usually have my very hyperactive 14 month old baby boy in the shopping cart. And I would imagine that I spend much more time in front of an advertisement screen if there's something that keeps my baby boy entertained while I go and fetch something, uh, for example, a dance, a dancing comic figure or something. And yep. that added 
then uh, as you've been talking, another question come t comes to mind. Is there different shopping when you do have a, a kid with you? I assume you're more straight, go this, 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 that, and minimize mm. the time in the grocery store. Yeah, um, so, so basically what the current system uh, that we're applying is, is screens with that hang above you. Uh, so the, the interaction uh, capabilities um, there are limited, but we can always expand the ecosystem of the system uh, of and, and the product is actually called not Sirene. That's the company. The product is called CAP, which means connecting ad impressions with purchase. So it's an acronym uh, for that one. And we can always expand the ecosystem uh, there as we sort of developed everything ourselves. Um, so we don't have like any any puzzle pieces that we don't know of. Um, as for your kid and, and the interaction with the kid, what we uh, definitely do right now is we sort of know which shopping trolleys, as there are special shopping trolleys uh, for toddlers and, and smaller kids, uh, we, we identify them and we can sort of target uh, these uh, trolleys as well. Or we can also leave out certain commercials because um, one of the only spaces in, in Germany, like if you want to advertise alcohol and stuff like this, you can sort of then say like, no, we don't advertise it to these uh, groups of people uh, because we don't want to want to influence someone uh, there. Um, but the interactive capabilities, we can we, we are definitely going into uh, R&D in that direction. We are expand, expanding there. Um, so it's a nice input. Uh, I really like it. Uh, and we, we can we can look into this. And yeah, to be honest, um, for, for us, uh, how, how did it come about like with the story? Um, for us, it was 2000, uh, like when we started while our master, we had to sort of get, and this is also why we located uh, here in uh, Germany, um, we had to get like retailers on board, but we also had to get uh, media agencies on board because we do not normally talk to our clients like uh, the, the um, Barilla and and, uh, and other brands, they are normally hosted by or uh, guided by media agencies. And this, these are the people that we work with the most. And these also have really creative ideas and, and also want to look at the whole customer journey. So not only the store. And this is this is really interesting for us as well. Yeah. That is a quote worth to be put on the blog post. We don't <laughs> really talk to our clients. <laughs> Love that. You've been already referring to uh, your location here in Germany. Um, you're not located in Frankfurt, but in Wiesbaden, for everybody who's yep. not from Germany. <laughs> that is the capital of the state of Hessen, where yes. Frankfurt is located. And since this is sponsored by Invest in Hessen, this interview, what does actually hasn't mean for you and why did you locate here well basically, basically as, as i'm swiss, swiss <laughs> um, um i just, I just came, came to frankfurt, frankfurt like before, before sirene, sirene i came to frankfurt, frankfurt uh, uh, on holiday, holiday or, or to to to, uh, to meet to friends or, or to fly from, from frankfurt, frankfurt because, because it's cheaper, cheaper than, than flying from zurich, from zurich. Um, but, but when, when it all it changed, changed uh, with, with Sirene, Sirene, so we so basically, basically why, why, why Hessen, why Wiesbaden? It has, it has several, several reasons, reasons to be honest. honest. So, so one, one reason, reason is, is as we found our, our institutional, institutional investor, investor here in Hessen, in Hessen. Um, um, together, together with a, with a with business, business angel, angel uh, that's situated, situated in Switzerland. In Switzerland. Um, um, then, then we found a strong academic, academic partner, partner here, here in Hessen, Hessen which, which is the European, European Business School, School that we work with closely, closely as we, we sort, sort of, of um, created an, an academic, academic board, board constituting of the European Business School, School the University of St. Gallen, and, and the Babson, Babson College uh, in America, America as well. well. And, and this, this was, was sort of the, the reason, reason or the easiness to be close to these partners. partners. And, and also, also we, we had, had the opportunity, opportunity to use an uh, office, office space. space. So, so we, we uh, together, together also, also with, with a partner, a partner where, where we, we have, have like storage, storage facilities, facilities and, and really, really nice, nice insured walls because we have like these huge screens, screens that we had to configure and stuff. So we, so we said, said like, okay, let's, let's jump on this opportunity, opportunity to be located in Wiesbaden. Wiesbaden, Wiesbaden, Wiesbaden is beautiful. It's, it's actually, actually also located, located quite nicely to Mainz, Mainz which is a student town. town. So, so actually, actually, even, even though, though I've never, never been to Wiesbaden, Wiesbaden before, before, I, uh, I, I moved, moved with, with the office, the office uh, of Cyrene. I, I fell in love with the city. I fell in love with the region. I fell in love 
obviously with the white wine that is uh, being produced here as well. Uh, it's, 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 it's lo- as a Swiss, it was unusual to sort of become an immigrant in Germany, but uh, I haven't regretted it since. <laughs> That is good to hear, especially I like that you mention uh, Mainz because it's my native city. And of course, Wiesbaden is very beautiful. They have a lot of towns with very a uh, lot of places in the town with very nice, very old villas and places. And they even have a casino there. <laughs> Whew, that was a long interview. We are running now at 39 minutes. Just want to say, Davide, thank you. It was just a pleasure having you here. Um, thank you very much and hope to hear back from you again. Yeah, yeah thank, thank you, Ian. You, uh, thank you for the opportunity, the opportunity to reintroduce you guys uh, to, to Sarin and what we're doing here. Yeah. That's all, folks. Find more news, streams, events, and interviews at www.startuprad.io. Remember, sharing is caring.